A film in two parts, its early scenes unfolding in the forestry and amongst the mountains surrounding Los Angeles as two men physically liaise, tenderly sharing each other's bodies, a reflection of hope, compassion and optimism. The latter scenes unfold within the city itself, images of a man with heavy sideburns cruising for young men, luring in a clueless Texan hopeful, new to the city, seeking opportunities and fun, unavailable back home. However, what awaits this young man is the vicious, cruel boot of his abuser, a man who may or may not be responsible for the kidnapping of other men in the area. This is Fred Halstead's L.A. Plays Itself, a gay hardcore pornographic film which encapsulates both Fred Halstead's expertise as an experimental pornographic filmmaker and his daring audacity to openly portray the depths of human kink within a film that offers commentary on L.A. as a city, as a character, a city of escapist dreaming, an embryo of queer liberation and the reality of the burnout underlying the city's streets of dashed hopes and dreams. Fred Halstead's filmmaking style embraces overlaid imagery on overlaid imagery, often creating ethereal textures, intense close-ups to the extent where it can sometimes be difficult to determine what the images show us, and an ironic juxtaposition of images which creates sexual connotations amongst the innocuous sights around the city. L.A. plays itself as a film which lulls us into a false sense of security. We are drawn towards promises of compassionate affairs amidst sunshine and hopes, only to be pummeled with the leather boots of exploitation and degradation. While Fred Halstead's filmmaking is gay pornography at its most provocative, his fringe filmmaking has also been celebrated with screenings at New York's Museum of Modern Art, embraced by the likes of John Waters, Divine, and even Salvador Dali, who stated that, after seeing LA plays itself, the film presented him with new information to me. Fred Halstead's filmmaking approach, while experimental, is often grounded in its erotic wickedness, avoiding the dreamy surrealism and maximalism of James Bidgood's Pink Narcissus, or the hallucinatory transcendentalism of Kenneth Anger. Halstead's films were both an expression of sexual decadence, a portrayal of his own hardcore fetishes, casting his own lover Joey Yale alongside himself, and a confrontational sense of commentary amidst plenty of visual digressions. Within L.A. plays itself, Fred Halstead embraces cutaways that connote sexuality, but don't necessarily depict it, visual double entendres, as if sex is anywhere and everywhere to those who know where to look. A pizza place promotional sign asks, had a piece lately? A bar's sign, lips, is obsessively zoomed into and zoomed out of. A dog salivates in the park amongst images of topless men in tight jeans. And after a detailed fisting scene, Halstead ends his film with an illustrated billboard fist, like a visual jest over the images he intended to shock us with. Halstead's visual offerings tease and foreshadow the pornographic sights he has prepared for us, a reflection that under the innocent surface of the city, sex, exploitation, and dehumanizing burnout lays waiting. Halstead's commentary on Los Angeles begins with the common portrayal as the city of dreams. The dream here is to seek financial opportunity, maybe even sexual liberation, possibly a unity of both in the form of sex work, reminiscent of the many tales of young hopefuls arriving in LA holding big dreams of stardom, fame and wealth. LA plays itself opens with rural imagery, the trees and mountains that surround the city, a safe haven, an optimistic escapism from the world's prying eyes, a source of great privacy and a nurturing of one's own heart as two gay men connect together in the woods, providing each other with the compassionate physical attention they both desire away from judgement. They are the dreamers, a depiction of hope that the city offers them in times of prejudice, as the two men take their sexual connection further, some viewers may find arousal, while others can recognise how tenderly these two men treat each other. For a moment, there's genuine physical love. There's wishful aspiration for life amongst the city that promises its tourists from across the country, the entire world. This is how Fred Halstead lulls us into a false sense of security. This sexual retreat is disrupted by images of bulldozers, construction, and the overturning of soil, as if the bubble is about to burst with the growth of LA, with the city's expansion, the arrival of new potential residents, and the destruction of the cruising spot sanctuaries. As LA plays itself shifts into its second half, set directly within LA itself, the voiceover of a young gay Texan man elaborates on his arrival to the city, seeking opportunities that weren't available in his small Texan hometown. 
This is a young man seeking the liberation and freedom promised in the film's earlier half. A man seeking a modest stability in the city of dreams, something likely not previously available to him. From the voiceover alone, this nameless Texan befriends the man we see often cruising around the streets of LA, played by Fred Halstead himself, seeking young men for his own abusive desires. He's a man in search of his own dream, the devastation of others. This is where Halstead's film becomes a reflection on the underlying seediness, the burnout, the exploitation and degradation of Los Angeles. A city that entices people with hopes and dreams, only to be chewed up and spat back out. A blunt, summarised experience of those who might not make it in Hollywood. This man, a nameless figure, is an encapsulation of the city. A city which demands and demeans value until it's had its fill. This man is the risk of being too trusting in the big city, which his new target, the young Texan, experiences as he's booted, whipped, spanked and kicked across the man's apartment floor. With the newspaper headlines found in the man's seedy apartment, news of men tied up, abused and killed, similar to how his newest victim is tied up in the closet, the implication becomes clear that not only is this man a threat, the city itself is a danger to the uninitiated too. This film unflinchingly showcases how, in a hardcore erotic metaphor, a human being's aspirations can be ground into dust. The Museum of Modern Art discussed the film's climax, reinforcing this notion, while also highlighting its stark contrast from the film's earlier scenes of serenity, stating that, For the first time in cinema history, Fred Halstead would depict a man being fisted on screen. It serves as the film's literal and figurative climax, but it couldn't be farther from LA Plays itself's opening images at the Los Angeles City Limits sign. Halstead's elliptical, evasive anti-narrative begins in the lush greenery of the natural world before being literally bulldozed into the centre of a grimy, feverish Sodom that deconstructs and erodes the human spirit through vivid, sadomasochistic catharsis. If the film's earlier rural scenery is a reflection of positivity, aspiration and ambition, only to be disrupted by the arrival of bulldozers, the forceful intrusion of the expansion of city limits, a gesture of the erosion of human spirit, then the abuse that our sideburns cruiser doles out to a young Texan becomes a reflection of this degradation too, through the form of intense, holoconsensual hardcore kink. As if to chew up and spit out the goals and dreams of young hopefuls who sought the innocent task of becoming somebody. In LA Plays Itself, where LA is played by a brutal abuser, nobody becomes anything. In conclusion, Fred Halstead's LA Plays Itself serves as an example of provocative pornography which blurs the barrier between intense erotica and experimental art due to its clever commentary on the prominence of sexuality in society and how the human soul is ground into nothingness by exploitation that serves to only gratify itself. Shocking, painful and squirming juicing for those who don't share in Halstead's kinks, LA Plays Itself becomes the closest Halstead got to making a horror film on the manipulative ease of destroying the optimist's soul. A special thank you to my incredible tier patron supporter Gil and to my super tier patron supporters Constantin Bombelli, Jamie and Milkway. 